So my name is Abel Cohen. I'm an animation and VR filmmaker from France. Uh, and I'm uh, presenting the project Bioloom uh, here at the Festival de la Imagen. And I also just finished a conference about the storytelling in Bioloom. In, in high school, I decided that I would go either into animation films or video games. So I did uh, first a, a, f a prep school, like an arts preparation school in Paris. Um, and then at the end of that year, I did uh, a bunch of exams to different schools for animation and video games. The school I wanted for video games didn't accept me. And I, uh, and I ended up uh, accepted to a school in the north of France called Supinfocom. Now they have rebranded, it's a different school under a different name that works in a different way. They're called uh, Rubica Animation. And, and that's a five-year school uh, in the north of France in Valenciennes in a small city. And those were very formative years. I, uh, we studied uh, graphic design, typography, uh, color theory, and then for the last three years, uh, 3D animation. And then from there on, I was in the north of France and I had longtime friends and, and, and a lot of uh, curiosity for London. So I went and moved to London. Um, and yeah, there I did a lot of work as a compositing artist, sometimes doing compositing for animation, compositing for uh, visual effects, um, in, in as, as a freelancer mostly. I'd say 95% of the work I've done was, was as, as a freelancer. Uh, and so it got me to work in many different places, uh, meeting a lot of people, learning a lot of uh, workflows and a lot of company structures. Very interesting time to, um, to explore um, professional work and to earn a living, which allowed me to do artistic projects on the side. And so for that whole period, I always had uh, either short films or event organization or a practice of a little bit of painting or drawing or photography. I always made sure to have like an active creative life outside of the work that brings me money with the ambition of, of eventually getting money from my own creative work. So myself, I was a freelancer hired on, on, on specific projects. Um, Actually, for, for, uh, for Netflix, it was on a show called Primal at a company in, in, in Paris called Studio La Cachette. And there, I think I was in a um, limited time employment. So it wasn't exactly the free freelance status. But yeah, for me, the, what I much prefer is doing time limited projects, working uh, there, making some money, working on my projects, then getting a bit more work elsewhere as a freelancer and changing projects, changing companies I work with, changing things keeps it interesting. It, it prevents you from doing the same thing over and over again. Animation projects for me, it's, it could be spending, I don't know, 10, 15 hours on one single shot. Uh, and that's like, if you go to my Instagram, there's a lot of these little one-off projects. Uh, which are usually there for me to learn things and explore ideas. Um, for a short film, it, there's no limit. It can take forever because there's no... In the way I work, I do a lot of it myself or most of it myself. I might get a little bit of help from sound design or from animation because like professional animators are very good and I'm not a special, specialist in making characters move, so I prefer having people who are specialized in that to do the work. And, and those projects can take an um, unlimited amount of time. Like right now I've been writing the same short film or rewriting the same short film for three years. Uh, and that's just the writing because I'm, I'm not particularly in a rush because I have got only many things going on. And yeah, animation takes time. So in, in 2014 or 15, somewhere around that time, I discovered the TED Talks of a, of a marine biologist called uh, Edith Witter. 
and uh, she's, she's one of the world's most prominent specialists on the subject of bioluminescence. Bioluminescence being creatures that can generate light. Um, and I, I saw her talks and I completely fell in love with bioluminescence. So I started watching all the documentaries, looking it up online and drawing making little animations, making little uh, watercolor paintings, um, just exploring that world in a playful way. I was a little bit obsessed with it. And then uh, one of those little animations I made had a little bit of popularity online, which was a good ego boost. And I decided, yeah, let's, I, could, I could make this into a, a project, into a series. And, uh, and that's around the time where my brother, Igal Cohen, who's a producer and his company Eco, um, who, who, he, he, he does a lot of very different things and he's extremely driven and very talented and he's a, a very strong producer. But it's been an immense strength to have him be the producer of it and making it happen. And, uh, and we applied for funding and they told us, this is nice, but we've seen things like this before, we need the story, we need characters. So. That's when uh, we got my, uh, my friend John Rowe, who's a professional screenwriter, uh, on board. And he, it's, 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 been, it's been incredible to work with him because uh, he's worked on shows for the BBCs, for, uh, I think for, for Netflix as well, as a, as a script editor and, um, and in various other positions in the, in, in the story of, of good quality television. And we, we started working on the story for a series on, on, and we built an entire story world and an outline for um, the first season of uh, a web series, so short format episodes, um, and the general direction for the up next seasons. And this took a while to sort of like um, put it together and then send it, send those documents to funders uh, with the hopes that they would fund it. Um, and, uh, and we tried to fund it and we couldn't. Uh, and, and, or it's not that we couldn't, but we, we got excited about the idea of doing a VR episode. And we saw that there was also excitement from funders and from other people of like, okay, yeah, VR is, the, is on the, uh, the rise and this is interesting. You have already a whole story world, a whole uh, characters and, 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 and the timeline. And so at first it was going to be like the VR episode is, is a part of the series. Is a, is like okay, you get to live one moment, one important moment of that uh, of that series. But it was almost from the start imagined as something that could be done individually. That like you don't need to have seen the series to do the VR, and you don't need to have done the VR to, to see the series. But as we got more interest in in the VR and less interest in the series, we just focused our in, our, our attention to the VR and rode in in a way where. It stands as its own, like it's it's part of a bigger story world, which allowed us to um, to enrich it, to make it feel like it's not just that uh, it's not just that moment. It's like characters that already have a relationship before the the experience begins, and the the world was already de there when we begin exploring it. It does not sort of like just exist. Or we wanted to create a feeling that doesn't just exist for us at that time. We're just entering an, an ongoing situation, and exploring that and discovering that. Um, and so yeah, that's, that's how we got into uh, making a VR project, making Bioloom. As, as creators, we have so much new worlds to explore, new uh, languages to define. Uh, and, and that's pretty exciting to me. Even though I'm an animation filmmaker at heart and what I like doing the most is animation for a frame, um, traditional animation in a way. Uh, the, the, the exploring VR was, was exciting because it's, there's no frame. Uh, the grammar does, like it, it, it existed in 2015, but it was still the very beginning. And to this day, it's still the very beginning of inventing the grammar for that medium. Um, and at that time, that was really exciting. So the transmedia aspect of things where projects can be something and something else. It's not something I seek out. I'm not looking to kind of like do many things at the same time. But I end up having interest in different things 
and, and, and curiosity for different things. And I end up exploring different things mostly because I feel excited by it. Even if I was kind of like not very knowledgeable about VR when we started, um, and at first I was a little bit reticent, like, oh yeah, this is a new technology, it's just like, it's, it's a fad. But then I tried it and I was like, oh yeah, this is incredible. It, 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 it's it's in, uh, impactful. And that allowed that, yeah, that, that gave me motivation, which allowed me to, con to continue. I didn't know at the time that it would take so long to make, uh, but, uh, but at least it gave me that impulse. I have, I have, I have read s quite a lot of um, classic science fiction when I was in my twenties. Uh, things like uh, Dune and Foundation and almost anything and everything by Isaac Asimov, and um, none of it is exactly related to um, to to Bailum, but it was for me the sort of like beginning of love with science fiction. Not really the beginning, but like the strengthening of the love with science fiction. Before that, there was Abyss, the movie Abyss, um, which also happens in the deep sea and is also quite fascinating. Uh, the movie Sphere, uh, Contact, a few kind of like science fiction classics, masterpieces uh, that were, uh, that I believe were very influential in, in forming my mind through, through the years. Um, to what, to what extent they were direct influences on, on Bailum, I cannot say. They were influences for sure, but it's also the sort of like the way the mind make, mixes things over, over time. And it ended up being a thing where like in 2015, I really wanted to make deep sea science fiction. And I also, there's, there's a lot of like um, technological science fiction. I wanted to explore biological science fiction. How do we explore fiction in the realm of biology? I don't particularly distinguish uh, animation from cinema. It's a part of cinema, and cinema can be anything we, can, we want to make it. So if people want to use animation as a didactic tool, then absolutely. Uh, if people want to make animation to tell stories, love it. All of it is possible. Um, as, as you know, I've had the pleasure of going to festivals lately, uh, thanks to Bailum and enjoying a lot of um, abstract animation, for example, pure art pieces where the, um, there, there is no educational message, there is no story to follow. It's all about feeling and emotion that you feel, not through characters, but yourself as you experience it. And that's another beauty of animation is that it can create um, direct emotional uh, involvement. And uh, I think that's magical. And the other things like education or storytelling or everything else, it's all magical. It's all things I love. I don't believe there's one better than the other or that we should allocate more time or more effort or more budget to a, to a specific type of animation. It depends on what the artist wants to do. In my case, I like telling stories, but I also like pretty visuals, but I also like pretty movement, but I also like colors, but I also like, it depends on the time and what I'm doing at the moment. Bailum is very narrative, but I also do completely non-narrative motion graphics pieces or drawing and painting and photography and yeah. It's, it's, it's incredible. I'm, I'm, I'm l loving it. I'm, this is a bit of a side tangent, but uh, I love coffee. I'm, I'm fascinated by coffee, and I'm so excited to be in this very important place for coffee culture. Uh, but also, I'm very excited to be at Festival de la Imagen, which it's my first time. I hope I will manage to come back someday in my life, but this is the other end of the world for me. Um, and, uh, and, 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 and people have been extremely nice. The festival is so kind, so uh, welcoming. Uh, I'm being looked after really well, even despite my jet lag tiredness and coming here and speaking approximate Spanish and everything, none of this has been an issue. And it's, it's been going, I feel in my, for me it's been going very smoothly and very pleasant, pleasantly. I'm, it's, it's only the beginning of my time in Colombia, but I'm extremely excited.